Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion that comes to us from Emily Dickinson, and thus will appear in two separate playlists on the channel, the Poetry Discussion Playlist, first and foremost, but also the Emily Dickinson Poems Playlist here on the channel. Now, this is a poem that I want to take a little bit of a different look at, something that I want to change a little bit of maybe uh, the way that this poem is generally discussed. Uh, but first, if you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel. I talk about poetry every Monday. I talk about novels, about short stories, things like that as well. So consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more literature uh, talk on this channel. And if you want to help me out with what I'm doing here, hitting the like button tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. But this poem in particular, I felt a funeral in my brain, is a poem that I I kind of took a step back from and said, okay, this is a poem that I, I often read, and when I do, I have a hard time really sort of placing any weight in it, and that's not Emily Dickinson. I have a hard time rooting this poem in reality. And the poem reads as such I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll. As all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear, and I and silence some strange race wrecked solitary here. And then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing then. And here's where I really want to, I really want to concentrate this discussion. I, I, I say all the time that I think Emily Dickinson has some of the greatest opening lines in literature. And I stand by that. I really think that that is true. I really think that conceptually stepping into a an Emily Dickinson poem is stepping into an Emily Dickinson poem is like the opposite of a funeral in your brain stepping into an Emily Dickinson poem is like a birth in your brain um It is as if you are birthed in to a new universe so often with an Emily Dickinson poem because there is, I felt a funeral in my brain. Where would you ever have put those words together? Where would you ever have read those besides an Emily Dickinson poem? So many of her poems are that way. I tried to think a lonelier thing. How strange that hits. How heavy it is. And so I figured, all of those things being true, maybe, maybe I just wasn't doing the proper legwork up front 
with this poem. So the whole sort of the whole sort of ambiance here, and I say ambiance because it's not a real thing. The ambiance here is sort of creepy, right? Uh, sort of like um, Edgar Allan Poe, but for adults, maybe. Edgar Allan Poe as a Christopher Nolan poem. So maybe the reason I, I don't really get as much weight with this poem, as many others, is because I'm not rooting it in reality. And to root it in reality, to really have some stake here, some real world stake here, maybe it's that very beginning that has to be taken a bit more literally, read a bit more literally. I felt a funeral in my brain. Oftentimes, this is conceptualized as our speaker is dead and our speaker is um, feeling the living world around her. What if that's not the case? What if all of this is taking place inside Emily Dickinson's mind, inside of our, I shouldn't say Emily Dickinson, inside our speaker's mind? And what would that mean? To feel a funeral in your brain? Well, couldn't that just be the death of some concept of the self that one had? So, for for instance, if we were so removed from the argument, from the process, so removed from the emotions involved, mightn't a particularly devastating breakup feel like a funeral, a, a piece of the concept of you that you have has died? Mightn't that feel that way? A concept you had for yourself is dead, is gone, is past. And all of the other concepts that you have of yourself, because we are all multiple, we are all multiple to the self. We are all, what's the, 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 the lyric from the verb, I'm a million different people from one day to the next? Um... Shout out to 1996. Um, we are all that way. We are all multiple. We are all many different things inside our own head. I am a different person in front of this camera than I am in my workplace. I am a different person here than I am when I'm getting my miles in every day. I'm a different person while I'm getting my miles in than I am while I am doing lifts even. Different types of trying to lose weight, trying to be more fit, have me in different mindsets. There are moments where in life where we have to reconceptualize the self. And one of these things dies. For, for instance, myself, there was a moment when I had to stop considering myself the power lifter. I used to be rocked up. I used to be jacked. Had a six pack, the whole thing, man. There was a moment where I realized, oh, I don't, need to train like that anymore. I have to lose this beer belly that I've found a way to accumulate. That guy in my brain, which did all of the fit guy things, had to die for me to get it. That was very difficult to wake up and realize you're the chubby guy. 
when you had been the six-pack guy. Is this poem that process? Let's, let's think about it. Let's think about something in your life that you've lost. Were you in a relationship and that relationship dissolved? Were you the in-shape guy that had to realize, oh, yeah, I, yeah, it's not anymore. Were you, at some point, much more creatively uh, inclined, and you had to come to terms with the fact that, oh, I haven't made a painting in a calendar year. I'm not Picasso. I'm not Caravaggio. I'm not Leonardo. Whoever it is, Francis Bacon. Whoever it is that um, tips your toll. Let's think about that moment in our life. That devastating breakup you went through. And read this poem one more time. With that concept of the person who was in the relationship. Has died in your mind. And the rest of you has to find some way to go on. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service, like a drum, kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak Across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll. As all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear and eye and silence. Some strange race wrecked solitary here. And then a plank in reason broke. And I dropped down and down and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing then. This then, at the end, suggests there's something next. This is not the comparative T-H-A in then, it is then, at every plunge, and finished knowing then, our speaker, it seems, goes on. When we feel that funeral in our brain, the death of some former self, some former conception that we had, there is a moment where it just makes sense. No, of course, I'm not still the buff guy. I have not been working out. Of course. There is some me post this relationship. There had been a me prior to it. Of course, I am not the world-renowned painter that I thought I would become. I simply haven't dedicated a moment of my life to it. And when all of these other conceptions in my mind are there, looking at this dead idea that I had of myself. <sighs> the realization is almost mind-numbing. And here, you know, I felt that funeral in my brain, this whole concept of me, the oneness that I am versus the multitude of which I envision myself. I can hear them lift that box and creak across my soul. As all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear and eye and silence. Because silence is where we really deal with the self. And then a plank in reason broke, of course. 
of course this is the case. Of course this is the person that I have become. Of course that part of me is no more. It's not reasonable to expect it to still be here. And I drop down and down. You don't just get to mourn that previous self. You have a little piece of you has to die with that death and hit a world at every plunge. I saw every stage of that relationship as I was letting it go. How stupid was I? I thought about every delicious beer that I drank to get this beer belly along the way. And at every plunge, at every plunge, and finished knowing. And finished knowing. Hey, what do I know? What do you know? Even about yourself. Even about myself. What do you know? Then, well, we all have to go somewhere. and We all have to get there at some point. There is a tomorrow, probably. Probably. If you're, thir- if you're 20 years old, you've lived 7,000-ish days and they've all had a tomorrow. If you're 30... You've lived uh, 10,000-ish days, and they've all had a tomorrow. Then, Emily Dickinson is tempting us. Tempting us to look forward. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you enjoy what I do here, hitting the like button really helps me out here on this channel. It tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers so that we might be more multiple on the channel. And if you find yourself here by chance, but not design, literature is the only thing that I talk about here. And I hope to have you back for the next one.